Hello and welcome back to another episode of Into the 99 Podcast, where we've got 99 cards because Commander's number one. I'm one of your hosts, Daniel. I am joined today with Slothy. Slothy, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing quite good, thanks. Uh, finally getting some nice weather. Um, how are you doing? I'm also doing good. I'm also enjoying the sun that we're getting. It was a little a little hot for me yesterday. The plus 30 is a little much, but no, it's, yeah. it's been nice to not be soaking wet in ankle-deep water in our crazy city. Oh, oh absolutely. And for those that are listening in the States, 30 is 86 Fahrenheit. It's too much. It's too much. I'll mm-hmm. die. I understand that yeah. a lot of people like that temperature, but I am not those people. I melt. No. I think 15 is kind of where it is for me. Yeah, that's a nice temperature. I agree. Um, we, uh, I hope everyone had a great weekend as well. Uh, I wanted to say first and foremost, thank you to everyone who's gone and given us uh, ratings on Spotify. We really, really appreciate it. If everyone else is listening as well, uh, if you're on Apple Music or Spotify, please just stop in, give us a rating, good or bad. It does still help. Hopefully good. Good's always good. And mm-hmm. yeah, it, it makes more people find the show. We can do more content the more people listen. So we really appreciate everyone who stops in and listens. Thank you to everyone who has rated. And yeah, I will get right into this deck because it's just uh, it's one of my favorite ones. I, I like a few things specifically in Magic and in order... They are Landfall, Enter the Battlefield, and then generally pretty much Chaos. I just like chaotic things in Magic where it's really hard to track board states. I, I like effects, and this this whole deck is uh, kind of based around that theme a little bit. It's pretty budget. We, uh, If you've read the show episode name, you'll know what it is. So I'm, I'm obsessed with these Baldur's Gate Commanders. I love them. I love this choose a background mechanic. It's it's enabled me to do so many things. I've built so much. <sighs> and w- without further ado, we're going to we're going to jump into this one. This is Bailoth, Baradol and Entertainer. Is that what it is? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Baradol is how it's going for now. And then we have him paired with a uh, background. So, number 1, it is four colorless and a red for an elf shaman. That is a great tribe for there elf has a lot of support. So you can go pretty tribal pretty easy with this. Uh, it's a legendary creature, Elf Shaman 2-5. Creatures your opponents control with power less than Bailoff Baradol's power are goaded. Whenever a goaded attacking or blocking creature dies, you create a treasure token. So, off the bat, playing this commander, everything two or less has to attack every turn, if it's an opponent's thing. If they block with their creatures that are two or less and they die, you get treasure. If they attack and they die, you get treasure. So, you you really do get a lot of accelerant in this deck, and I really should have put probably more things to do with my treasure tokens. But that wasn't the point of the deck. The point of the deck was actually the secondary commander, which is, uh, I'll let you take this one, Slothy. Absolutely. Um, so this is, is uh, raised by Giants, a five and a green for a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have base power and toughness 10-10 and are Giants in addition to their other types. I think this is the best background to go with Bailoff. Yeah, I agree. Without a doubt. So, yeah, before before I even start this, it's my my deck's called Gigantic Entertainment, Bailoff, Gigantic Entertainment. I love it. This is nuts. Having everything 10, 10 like 10 or less have to attack every turn is crazy. And that means that every time it gets back to our turn, for the most part, our opponent's going to be tapped out. So, we're going to be able to swing with our enormous 10-10 commander at players who haven't been able to actually do anything, like to block us or stop us. They just have to whittle each other down. I I think that this is just such a fun pairing. Uh, It's it's so good on curve as well. It's five mana for Bailoth, six mana for the Raised by Giants. A lot of people aren't going to be able to remove Raised by Giants, so they're going to have to target Bailoth pretty aggressively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a really, really fun deck. I love Goad. I talked about Kama initially when we first uh had Kama come out from the Kamigawa one and that's one of my favorite decks I've ever built I I just think goad is a fun mechanic it's something that makes the table interact people can't sit back and dirtle they can't save stuff up I like goad a lot yeah absolutely it makes the game feel a lot faster yeah it it just it it makes it I'm, I'm one of the people who does this I sit and I like have this overwhelming board state and then a lot of times people feel like they can't do anything because, like, if they swing, then they're open to my, like, monster swing. This, everyone's swinging. And sometimes games have to end, right? Everyone knows the the meme of, like, oh, yeah, a commander, ga- a quick commander game is going to be three hours, right? I like, mm-hmm. I like decks like this that are a little group sluggy that, like, make, they drain the table. 
I, I just, I like the game's got to end, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll jump right into just the artifact section and sure. you, you'll see a bit where I went with this one. Like, like I said, I love chaotic things in magic and one of the most chaotic cards in magic is Aeon engine. It's five colorless. It enters the battlefield tapped. You tap it, exile it and reverse the game's turn order. Yeah. Uh, it's also really, really fun for if players are trash talking each other during it and I'm going to kill you on my turn and then I just change the turn order so they get their turn first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, really okay. like that card. You want to take yeah. these next two? Sure. Uh, next up, we've got Arcane Signet, uh, two mana. Tap to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Simple stuff. Um, then we've got Chaos Wand, three mana for... Uh, tap four and then tap it. Target opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an instant or sorcery card. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost, then put the exiled cards that weren't cast this way on the bottom of that library in a random order. I love this card. Yeah. I uh, I just, I really enjoy, like I said, chaotic effects that make the game kind of wonky. is really fun. Uh, this ignores timing restrictions, so you can get cool sorceries off if you have someone who's taken extra turns. You know that they have uh, like those kind of cards, like Time Stretch or something in there. You can mm -hmm. you could steal their time stretches. It's really funny to see what people mystical tutor to the top of their deck by just playing it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I just I like chaos wand. I really like uh, it, it makes you focus a little bit on like it's fun to just randomly do to players, but it's also fun to be able to take a second and be like, okay, well, I I know that if I'm playing against Slothy, I know that Slothy's likely got a board wipe, so he can probably like he, he plays a lot of removal. Maybe I can get what I need from him or. If I'm playing with my friend Kyle, I, I know that he plays ramp in every deck. Like, he's a hard, hard green ramp player. So I know that I'm likely to hit, like, a Cultivate, something like that that's going to ramp me back up to these higher cost cards like my commander. I, I just love Chaos Wand. And there there is also players who just play heavy counter spells, and it's fun to counter them with their own spells. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this is a nice way to dump in with your treasure tokens that you'll get from Bailoff. Because, again, you have to remember that, like, it's going to be a 10 10 everything power 10 or less that attacks or blocks and dies is going to give you a treasure token right so you're mm -hmm. going to have so many of them sitting there i probably should have stuffed halson in this deck just for fun turn them all into bears yeah. oh yeah yeah i love halson uh the next one we have is commander sphere it's another simple card three mana you tap to add one mana of it of your uh, commander's color identity you sack it draw a card this being reprinted yeah. so recently i've just been shoving it in decks because again it's just such a good cheap mana rock i i haven't been yep. i haven't had as much time to be going out to game stores lately and to buy stuff i've been building mostly from collection mm -hmm. and it's made a lot more budget friendly decks than i normally would because i'm not out just rebuying new copies right so uh, yeah. I, I said earlier that this is a pretty budget one this is only 190 dollars. this is a pretty fun deck if you like goad pretty easy mm -hmm. to get going um i wanted to talk the next one too though as another way to uh mana dump with your treasure tokens we have jinx choker it's a three mana artifact at the end of your turn a target opponent gains control of jinx choker and puts a charge counter on it at the beginning of your up uh, ah, sorry i can't talk today at the beginning of your upkeep jinx choker deals damage to you equal to the number of charge counters on it and for three you can put a charge counter on jinx choker or remove one from it it's an interesting card yeah it's really fun to just especially if you have tons of mana to dump into it and you know that at the end step, you get to send it to another opponent. I, I've i slighted you when I killed all your creatures. All right, well, I'm going to put 10 into it and give it to Daniel. Hmm. This this deck is meant to make the game go quickly. And it's going to put its own target, its, its own counter on it every turn. And like I said, I'm mana dumping into it. A lot of times games have to end. And this is how we're making games end. Yeah, this is... I don't think I've ever seen that card before. I play a lot of really, really silly cards. Uh, by the way, this deck is it's meant for a fast game. Like if you need to... If you want a deck where you only have a fast game or you want to see what it's like to infuriate the table, this is going to be the deck for you because there's a lot of things that will salt the table. Uh, the Architect has given it a really low salt score, and I think it's because of the same thing. No one just plays these cards that I play. But Jinx Choker is pretty silly. It's, I'm, glad, I'm glad you saw a new one. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, next one up is uh, Mind Crank. Two mana. Whenever an opponent loses life, that player mills that many cards. Yeah, that's a rough one. Yeah. It's a rough one in a go deck where everyone has to attack every turn. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you're either going to take a bunch of mill or you're going to give me treasure tokens. Um, we have uh, the next one on this list is Orb of Dreams, and it's in the deck specifically so people can't be like, well, I have a turn with this. Uh, Orb of Dreams is permanence coming to play tapped. Mm -hmm. So by the time that they can use it, they are going to have to attack with it. Interesting. Yeah. 
it's like an anti-summoning sickness safety card. Like you're, by the time you can actually use your card, you have to swing with it. So like you're not going to get a Birds of Paradise out and then be like, okay, well, maybe I can use it. I guess you could still tap the birds, but regardless, I'm, I'm trying to keep everything on the board tapped so everyone can wildly swing. Whoever is in the turn orders after me, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Like whoever is the very last player is going to be the one who has the most opportunity to swing out of people. Yeah, Orb of Dreams is good salt. Then we have Soul Ring, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, we got to ramp to these big ones. And you want to take this last one here? Yes, I quite like this one. Uh, it's Wand of Wonder, three in red. Uh, you can tap four and tap it to roll a d20. Each opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an instant or sorcery card, then shuffles the rest into their library. You may cast up to X instant and or sorcery spells from among cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost. Uh, if you get a one to nine, X is one. Ten to nineteen, X is two. And if you get a twenty, X is three. I'm in love with this card. Every part of it. Yeah, and that that art is... Yeah, awesome. I was gonna say I love I've loved the artwork since I saw it, but I I love Chaos Wand. I stuff it into decks all the time. I'm amazed there's not a Howling Mine in this deck, but this will yeah, have to do right. That's something that I was a little bit surprised of actually. Yeah, I'm probably just out of Howling Mines while I was building. To be honest, now that I'm looking at it, but Wand of Wonder is just it's really fun and it gives you a ton of utility because now you don't really have to choose who to Chaos Wand. Right, you're kind of Chaos Wanding everyone and picking what best suits the situation at worst and at best you're getting something from everyone no one's putting instants and sorceries in their deck if they're not good right so oh, you could really easily in theory like hit a cultivate an assassin's trophy and then like a cyclonic rift from someone and bounce like waste their cyclonic rift waste an assassin's trophy on something of theirs and cultivate ramp yourself like wand of wonder really does a lot of work mm -hmm. yeah i love wand of wonder <laughs> um i want to go into my lands quickly because there's a few that matter a little bit number one is rogues passage any any deck that you have a big commander you want a rogues passage i believe yeah i would agree yeah and with our commander being a 10 10 it's going to be very easy to just blow people off the board uh so this is tapped up for a colorless or four and a tap target creature can't be blocked this turn then the other one i wanted to talk about is forbidden orchard i really like this card especially in a goad like deck uh you add one mana of any color whenever you tap forbidden orchard for mana target opponent creates a one one colorless spirit token but with our commander out, number one, we're able to be politics a little bit with this card. Be like, don't worry, I'm going to give you a blocker. However, when that blocker dies, I'm going to get treasure tokens for it. I'm able to make it so there's more things that are forced to attack on the board. Forbidden Orchard is is also just a really, really good card in a deck like this. And it's just yeah. nice to be able to pass out tokens. Like, we're doing a lot of things that are going to make the table angry. So a few nice things will will go a long way. I don't know if it's really going to matter with this one. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Um, <laughs> and then because I've got so many things that are going to like the Jinx Choker, for instance, is a very problematic card. Everyone's going to give it back to you. Just in advance, just know that Jinx Choker is coming directly back at you every time you send it to someone. Um, but it's uh, Witch's Clinic. It is a land that taps for a colorless, two and a tap. Target commander gains lifelink until end of turn. When we're able to just give our commander 10-10 and lifelink... It, yeah, it really makes it not as big of a deal to lose the life that we're losing in this deck. Well, I mean, and a lot of times they won't be able to attack you either, so... Yeah, but like I said, there's a lot of things that are going to... This This is to end a game quick. Like, this deck is mm -hmm. going to kill us as well. It's going to kill everyone. Um, oh, yeah. We'll go into enchantments next, because there's some fun ones in there. Sure. Uh, you want to start us off here? Yeah, so the first one is Aestheticism. Uh, three double green. Creatures you control can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. And you can tap one in a green to regenerate target creature. Very important in this deck. Yeah. You want to survive board wipes, and you want to make it... Pe if, pe if people can target bail out, they're going to. Absolutely. Generally okay. speaking, when you're playing goad and your commander's goad-based, you have the most annoying card on the table. Therefore, you have three people targeting you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And not to mention that your commander is going to be a 10-10. Yeah, you also do have a 10-10 commander yeah. on top of it being annoying. That's also very worth mentioning, I guess. Actually, seeing the next card, it might be worse than that. Yeah. I uh, know it. Actually, it's uh, it's generally specifically for just our commander. Colossal Majesty is 2 and a green. Sure. At the beginning two, of your upkeep, down, if you control a card with... Oh, oh yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control a <laughs> creature with power 4 or greater, you draw a card. So this is just going to be an early game get out and sit on the board, and we're going to be able to double draw every turn because our commander is going to be monstrous. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, you can take that next um, one. Yeah, so 
You said before the show that I was going to love and hate this. Yeah. <laughs> I think I figured out which one. Um, but this next one is Colossification, uh, five double green enchant creature. When it, Colossification enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. And enchanted creature gets plus 20, plus 20. Yeah. So, yeah, a yeah. few things. So, one, it's very fun to make your commander a 30 30. Yeah. On top of that, though, it's very fun to shove on top of someone's Birds of Paradise that is now goaded. 2021 Birds of Paradise. Yeah. It's really, really fun to put on, like, if somebody else has, like, a creature that, like, you know is going to be problematic to block or something that's trample, it's mm. really funny to stuff this thing on top of it. Although mm. then it's not goaded, you just have to convince them that they should attack with it, so. Yeah. But, yeah, generally a lot of the times I'm going to put it on my commander and make everything 30 or less attack. Yeah, that's fair. That's. But putting it on birds would yeah. be great. Uh, we also have the next one is a really fun card, and I, I just love playing it right now. It's Descent into Avernus. Two and a red. At the beginning of your upkeep, you put two Descent counters on Descent into Avernus. Then each player creates X treasure tokens, and Descent into an, uh, a lot of words. And Descent into Avernus deals X damage to each player, where X is the number of de- counters on Descent into Avernus. Number one, you're going to get your treasures first, so you're going to be the first one to do it. But number two, this is just going to like blast the table down farther and farther. And it starts really, really early. Like, you could potentially get this out on a turn two. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like I said, it's just it's just accelerating the game. This is a, a fast game deck. Yeah. Um, the next up, we've got Greater Good, two double green. Sacrifice a creature. Draw, ch- draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power, and then discard three cards. Draw ten, discard three. Yeah, pretty solid way to refill us if we need to. Mm-hmm. And again, like I said, the... Generally, you'd worry about the command tax, but I, I've played this deck a few times, and I've just had unreasonable amounts of treasures. There's no need for yeah. treasure doublers in this. No, you're you're doing just fine. Yeah, it's every creature. Is, it's going to be rough. Um, the next one is also super, super important in this because everyone's going to try to kill Bailoff. Uh, it's Grip of Chaos. We have four double red. Whenever a spell or ability is put onto the stack, reselect its target at random if it has a single target. Hmm. Yeah, you select from all legal targets. It's super fun to see somebody try Path to Exile my commander and then have to roll a dice to see which of the 30 creatures on the table it's going to get. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I really like that card. Grip of Chaos is super fun. Um, it makes removing things pretty much impossible. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's really hard. Like, if you try, if, if you have a Smothering Tithes out and you're just going hard with it, and I try to, uh, like, naturalize it or something, it really, really throws a wrench into that plan. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Gri- Grip of Chaos really, really protects everything. Um, I I fell in love with this when it was used against me. I had a deck that was specifically meant to, uh, it was in Slogurk, where I was just destroying people's lands. Yeah. And uh, Grip of Chaos came out really, really early, and I kept hitting my own lands with Grip of Chaos. Mm-hmm. It gave me it gave me good respect for this card. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um. Next up, we've got Guild Artisan, uh, one in a red, legendary enchantment background. Uh, commander creatures you own have whenever this creature attacks a player. If no opponent has more life than that player, you create two treasure tokens. I like this, and it's yeah. also really easy to explain why you're attacking someone that way. I need treasure, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be able to afford the commander tax when you kill Bailoff next turn. Yep. Uh, we also have Hand to Hand as the next one. Two in a red. It's an enchantment. Instance and abilities requiring an activation cost cannot be played during combat. Nice. Yeah, no no shenanigans there. This next one is, is a card that I really like. I run this one in my Goto deck. Um, but it's uh, Mana Barbs, three to red. Whenever a player taps a land for mana, Mana Barbs deals one damage to that player. Yeah, I like that card a lot. Yeah. Um, the next one, again, we, we're goading everything. We, we care about it dying. It, it's really on theme with our commander. It's most wanted. It's two and a green. It has a flash. It has enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus one. Number uh, When Enchanted Creature dies, create two treasure tokens. This is just a great way to pay for our own commander tax if someone's going to destroy our commander. Yep. But it's also just really fun to flash out onto something that's, oh, I'm just going to I'm gonna swing at you with this, like, 2-2. Two, two. It won't be a big deal. And then I flash, make it a 4-3. Four, four, I just like it. I, I think it's good overall. It's a good way to ramp out. It's fun. It's 25 cents. Can't get enough of it. Yeah. Um... Then we've got Popular Entertainer, one in a red. Uh, it's another background. Commander creatures you own have. 
whenever one or more creatures you control deals combat damage to a player, go target creature that player controls. Yeah, we're just doubling down on what we need to do. Yeah, fair enough. The next one is the bane of many players' existence, Possibility <laughs> Storm. Uh, three, double red. Whenever a player casts a spell from his or her hand, that player exiles it, then exiles cards from the top of his or her library until he or she exiles a card that shares a card type with it. That player may cast that card without paying its mana cost, then the, uh, they put all cards exiled with Possibility Storm on the bottom of their owner's library in a random order. Yeah. Another card that just makes it very, very difficult to to hit our commander. The The more chaotic a deck, the more built-in answers in your deck don't work. The more your counter spells are useless, the more your removal isn't good. Because, like, you're, you're not really going to want to risk uh, just destroying one of my creatures if you might roll into a board wipe, right? Yeah, exactly. It's uh, Possibility Storm really, really changes the dynamic of the game up, I think, from the moment it hits the table. Yeah. Yeah. Pa- pa- yeah, it's Possibility Storm is just such a fun card. If if nobody in your playgroup plays Possibility Storm, you could be that person. You could be the you could be the one to bring it into your playgroup and make uh, sure everyone's uh, having a great time. Don't 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 listen to him about that. Don't don't do it. Don't you should. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. Don't do it. <laughs> uh this is another great dump for our mana. Yeah. Uh it's Pyrohemia. It's two double red. Uh, at the beginning of your end st- uh, the beginning of the end step, if no creatures are on the battlefield, you sack Pyrohemia and one red. Deals one damage to each creature and each player. Our commander is going to be able to survive this easily. Oh, absolutely. Especially but, if it's a 30 30. Yeah, but we're going to be able to pretty regularly wipe everything off the board. Mm. And it's uh, our commander cares specifically if they're attacking or blocking and dies. So if someone's just trying to do something like they, uh, let's say I swing out at you, someone else has Bailoth on the field, I swing out at you. And you're like, don't worry, I'll just fog it. Like, we've got an Angus McKenzie player or something at the table, which is something that happens in my play group a lot. Yeah. Those creatures are still attacking and blocking, and killing them will still give me my treasure tokens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah true. I, Pyrohemia interacts really well with the uh, ability that way. And like I said, it's just really funny to just, like, wipe the board and just, like, smash people of their life. Again, that I can't explain how much that Witch's Clinic is very important. And then I can't explain further why I didn't put something to go fetch it in the deck. It's just, yeah, it's yeah, coming it's random if it's there. It kind of fits the theme of just kind of chaos. Yeah, exactly. But next up, we've got uh, Sticky Fingers, a single red for an aura. Uh, enchant creature, enchanted creature has menace, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. And when enchanted creature dies, draw a card. Yeah, I really, again, like this card a lot. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good one. We'll hit our. Uh, we'll we'll go. I, I'd like our instance next. We'll we'll start off start off strong with Shander's ignition. Three double red target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each other creature and each opponent. Um, this is a really really good card just in general. But uh, if you specifically change one of the cards in the deck, you make a very nice combo of uh, if you can give your creature infect. Yeah. Then Barrett will kill the table. Yeah. Because it it. Or not Barrel Bail Off, sorry. Whatever it is. Double well, B. That's last name. B squared. Uh yeah, we'll kill the table with uh that. So if you put Triumph of the Hordes in here, it's a it's a really good card. I just Triumph of the Hordes desperately needs a reprint. Yep. Absolutely. But despite that, it's still gonna be a five mana, ten damage to everything, ten damage to every opponent, which is really, really good. Mm-hmm. Sure is. Yeah. Um Next up, we've got Creative Technique, four in a red. It's got Demonstrate, so when you cast a spell, you may copy it. If you do, choose an opponent to also copy it. Uh, shuffle your library, then reveal cards from the top of it until you reveal a non-land card. Exile that card, put the rest at the bottom of your library in a random order, and you may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. I love Chaos so much. It's Chaos for everyone, yeah. not just me. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, we have our normal Cultivate, because I put Cultivate in every deck that has green and can have it. We've just got our normal two and a green. You search the library for two basic lands, one to the field, one to hand. Field tapped, I should say. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. Oh, yeah, I'll do the next one, too. We also have explosive vegetation, three and a green. Search the library for up to two basic land cards. You put them on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Again, another card I put in everything. I should put in something to uh, fetch Witch's Clinic, mm-hmm. but yeah. I didn't. But I should. Let it be known that I should, and if you're building this deck, you probably should, too. It will really help you because I more than once killed myself playing this deck. <laughs> um, next up, we've got the second best card with a name similar to this, 
Uh, we've got Hull Breach. Uh, red and a green. Choose one, destroy target artifact or enchantment, or destroy target artifact and target enchantment. I love this card. In in yeah. Commander specifically, there's going to be a lot of times where you can get a two mana destroy two off. That's going to be great. Absolutely. Uh, this one's also kind of fun. I enjoy this. Imposing Grandeur. Uh, mm -hmm. Four and a red. Each player may discard their hand and draw cards equal to the greatest mana value of a commander they own on the battlefield or in the command zone. Uh, specifically for us, our uh, Raised by Giants is a commander. Yeah. So we can draw six. Yeah, it, even if it's not in play. I, I really like that ability. And again, something that might buy a little bit of free will at the table because you're not forcing them to discard. I thought about putting like a Wheel of Fortune in here or something, but it, it just yeah. seemed it seemed too annoying to make people throw their hands out. So this is just yeah. a very you may. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of annoying, do you want the next card? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this next one is Indomitable Creativity X Triple Red. Destroy X target artifacts and or creatures. For each permanent destroy this way, its controller reveals cards from the top of his or her library until an artifact or creature card is revealed and exiles that card. Those players put the exiled cards onto the battlefield and then shuffle their libraries. That is a lot of words. I love this card. <laughs> but it's uh, very, very fun. Again, another great way, another great thing to sink your mana into this. And it's, it's chaos at its finest again, right? I'm going to blow every creature and artifact off the board and let's see what we get. Let's just, let's see. It's kind of like playing uh, one of the Warp Worlds but in a way that everyone won't pick up. They'll still be angry, for sure. They'll be upset, undoubtedly. But yeah. but, it's yeah. a, but it's a great card. Um, we also have Kick in the Door. It's one red. You put a one on counter on target creature. That creature gains haste until the end of the turn, can't be blocked, and you venture into a dungeon. Yeah. Yeah, I like venturing into the dungeon. Um, then we've got uh, Kodama's Reach, two and a green. Uh, search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal them, put one onto the battlefield, tap the other into your hand, and then shuffle. Nice and simple. Yep. Um, we also, if people don't want to block our cards so we can get our treasure, Predatory Rampage helps us. We have three double green creatures you control. Get three, three until end of turn. Each creature your opponent's control blocks this turn if able. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, and then we've got uh, Rampant Growth, one and a green. Search your library for basic land card, put it on the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle. Yep. We also have Sky Shrug Plane, three and a green. Search your library for up to two forests, put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Yeah. Oh, man, this next um, card's fun. <laughs> Um, this next one is a Spectacular Showdown, one in red. Put a double strike counter on a target creature, then go to each creature that had a double strike counter put on it this way. And it's got overload for four triple red, so you can cast it for that instead. If you do, change target to each. Go to everything, give everything double strike, let's go! Uh, it's also, by the way, it's not opponents, so overloading it will put them on your creatures. Yeah. Yeah. So your creatures will also become goaded. They will be joined in the party, which is very fun. Oh, yeah. And then we have one of my favorite reprints that they just did, Traverse the Outlands. This card was nuts in price for so long. Uh, we've mm -hmm. got four and a green. Search library for up to X basic lands, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Put them onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. This is just going to be awesome with our commander being a 10-10. A five mana grab 10 lands out of our deck is going to be game-changing. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah. Right? I, I just like that. Um, then we'll we'll crush into our instance here, because there's some fun ones in that, and we'll we'll end off with our simple creatures. No Planeswalkers. Absolutely. Yeah, you want to start us uh, off? Um, yeah, so the first instant is Arc Bond, two and a red. Choose target creature. Whenever that creature is dealt damage this turn, it deals that much damage to each other creature and each player. Yeah, Arc Bond, <laughs> Arc Bond does work. <laughs> if you have a player who's just... Uh, it's really fun, because uh, I play, again, in a a group of people that play Blightsteel Colossus and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's really fun to just kill everyone at the table with an arc bond. Somebody, yeah, sw yeah somebody swings with Blightsteel, they're like, I'll block it, I'll just arc bond it. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I like it a lot. Uh, I really like to pair this with the, um, the my favorite play thus far with it has been with the Predatory Rampage we did, where mm -hmm. each creature your opponent's control blocks, so everything does damage to my creature. Yeah. And then I arc bond it and I kill the table that way. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. This one will almost kill... The next one, too, will almost kill the table if you swing with your commander. It's Bounty of Might. Four double green. Target creature gets 3-3. Three, three, target creature gets 3-3. Three, three, target creature gets 3-3. Three, three. Uh, very fun offensively for us, and just also very fun to hurl onto other people's creatures, like, while they're attacking. Yeah. And uh, notably, that is 3-3 three, three until end of turn. Until end of turn, yes. Uh, I like that you can give something 9-9. Again, I really like killing people with Birds of Paradise. 
If someone has a birds of paradise, they're getting the immortal birds of paradise, the god king bird. Dan will not let your bird die. It, yeah. It's going to be, uh, with colossification on the birds, it would be, what, uh, 21? So you'd have a 29, 30 birds. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah, that's, that's silly. Um, next up, we've got Chaos Warp, two in a red. The owner of target permanent shuffles it into their library, then reveals the top card of their library. If it's permanent, they put it onto the battlefield. Yeah, I honestly think it's just one of the best red cards. I think it's something that should be in almost every red deck. Without a doubt. It's so good. Uh, I also like that I can, if I feel like, just throw it at one of my treasures and see what I get. Yeah. Or just if you tutor for something, just get it on the battlefield for free. Tutor for, like... Yeah, tutor to the top, like, worldly tutor something. Find uh, Eldrazi. Yeah. No, Chaos Warp is just a... Yeah. Uh, it's a phenomenal card, and I also like the Chaos. I, I, I just, I, like I said, I like random plays. They A lot of people kind of take some time during their turn, right? It's, we all make the slow play jokes. Uh, mm -hmm. Chaos Warp, it, it wrecks people's game plans, right? If they had an Avacyn and they were planning a board wipe, um, they're just like, okay, I'm going to board wipe. I'm just, all right, well, I'm going to Chaos Warp Avacyn. Let's see what happens. Yeah. I, I just... I, I like to see people's plans get thrown thrown to the wind. And and Chaos, things like this deck does really do that. Uh, Chaos Warp is just such a good one for it. This next one as well is really weird and chaotic. Uh, one double red. It's an instant. You gain control of target spell that targets only a single permanent or player. You copy it, then reselect the targets for the spell and the copy. The new targets can't be you or a permanent you control. I love this card. Mm -hmm. someone tries to path to exile me now we path to exile two of their things uh and especially with our uh i, I really like it if we've got the uh what's the word i'm thinking grip of chaos out right because yes. this is going to remove my cards from the ability to uh it, it removes my cards from the ability to be the target mm -hmm. yeah i just yeah i like that card a lot it's it's very fun to play yeah um this next one is one that if this uh, deck is still a little bit out of your price range. You can cut this one and make it a lot more manageable. Yeah, pretty it's, much. Uh, That's like a third of the deck. Yeah. It's uh, Deflecting Swat. Uh, two in a red. If you control a commander, you may cast a spell without paying its mana cost. You may choose new targets for target spell or ability. Yeah, just a good way uh, to get things away from it. Yeah, said it before and I'll say it again. They should have reprinted these in Double Masters. Well, Double Masters was just a commander set, right? Like, they pre-printed yeah. so many cards specifically good to commander. Like, you, you didn't put print Muldrotha in for yeah. like other players it's for commanders right so yeah. the the free cycle it would have been the best spot it would have really upped the value that was in them especially if they put them in there as rares absolutely yeah i think that that was a big miss on their part like i i know that they don't want to overvalue sets but the these cards do desperately need to be reprinted because they are very fun to play yeah it's it i think i made this comparison before but it's kind of like dockside where you had one place you could get it beforehand mm -hmm. So that just made the price skyrocket, and they reprinted Dockside, and it's still a $75 Canadian, um, $75 card. Well, there's still not enough supply of it, right? Like, even with that mm -hmm. one printing, it's like a limited run. There's just not yeah. enough Docksides. Dockside is a very good card for Commander, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the same thing would be for these ones, too. Yeah, they they have a place pretty much in every one of those. The I like the ability. They They do make you play a little differently, having the potential zero cost. Uh, change because you threat assess based on what's open, what's available. Yeah, absolutely. That being said, though, deflecting SWAT is still fun. Yeah. I also like this one as well for the same reason I talked about the uh, Orb of Dreams earlier. Uh, it's Expedite. Mm -hmm. It's one red. Target creature gains haste until end of turn, and you draw a card. This can be a great finisher for us if somebody tries to just get rid of our commander so that they have another turn. We can give it haste as well. We can give a problematic creature an opponent has haste. Like, somebody gets a... Uh, a big, like you've said before, Eldrazi out. All right, well, we're going to give it haste, and it's goaded. Yeah. And we draw a card. Or Blight Steel. Yep. Yep. Gross. <laughs> um, next up, we've got Feed the Clan, one in a red. You gain five life, but it's got Ferocious. You gain ten life instead of if you control a creature with power four or greater. One of the green, though, not one of oh. the red. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but no, yeah. Uh, very Again, a good way to get your life back up, because a lot of this stuff drains you. Mm-hmm. Um, this is, I mentioned earlier, I have an Angus player in my group. This yeah. is for them. Uh, one in a red. Damage can't be prevented this turn. And it has nice. flashback of one red. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a very good one for us. Um, then we've got Fling, one in a red. Uh, as an additional cost to cast a spell, sack a creature. 
Fleeing deals damage equal to the sacked creature's power to any target. Yeah. A lot of times we're just hurling a 10, 10 cost at something uh, with that colossification on. It is really funny if uh, we we tap, we attack, it taps, we put colossification on, and they're like, okay, I've got a turn to figure out something, and then I hurl it at them for 30. That's yeah, good. good way to, to end somebody's game. Yeah, I, I like fling. I put it in a lot of decks. It's fun, and our commander's big enough to warrant it, I say. Absolutely. We also have fog, just one green. Prevent all combat damage to be dealt this turn. People are going to eventually try kill us if they get our commander off the board. Mm -hmm. um, then we've got Harrow. Uh, two and a green. As an additional cost to cast a spell, sack a land. Search your library for two basic land cards, put them on the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. I like that this one is not... They don't enter the battlefield tapped. Yeah, yeah. Harrow's, Harrow's good acceleration for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have Predator's Rapport. Two and a green. Instant. Choose target creature you control. You gain life equal to that creature's power plus their toughness. Oh, gaining 30 life seems pretty good for well, three mana. Yeah, well, because, yeah, our commander on its own is 20. If we have Colossification guess, on it, it would be 60 would life. Be, yeah, 60 rather, yeah. Yeah, Predator's Rapport is really good for getting us a lot of life back. Yeah. Um, then we've got Prize Fight. One in a green. Target creature you control. Fights target creature you don't control. And create a treasure token. Yep. It's, uh... You can also do that in you. You can do it in the attack block step so that you double down on what you get. Yeah, your treasure tokens. Yeah, I like prize fight a lot. It's fun to blow people's blockers off the board too. We also have a lot of these cards you don't really see in a lot of decks like Predator's Rapport. Uh, Sheltering Word is another one of them. Mm -hmm. I really like this card. It's one in the green. Target creature you control gains hexproof until a turn, which is a great ability, and you mm -hmm. gain life equal to that creature's toughness. So again, for us, it's a save our creature, gain ten life. Awesome. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Um, then we've got Soul's Fire, two and a red. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to any target. Yeah, again, just another way to really blow people off the board with our commander's huge, huge power. Like, having a 10-10 commander is very unique to magic. It's not something that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Not without, like, really equipping it up or, like, filling it with enchantments. Yeah, yeah, having the background just kind of sitting there kind of really changed things. Yeah, I, I really like that ability to because there's no partner pairing that lets mm -hmm. you just like have a raw ten ten color like ten ten commander on the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a ten ten for five mana as well. I should say. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, that is a token generator and a goad monster. I I love it. And then we also have Will's reversal. Uh, actually, you take this one. I know you like this one. Yeah. So Will's reversal. It's two in a red. Choose target spell or ability with one or more targets. Roll a d20 and add the greatest power among creatures you control. Uh, 1 to 14, you may choose new targets for a spell or ability. And 15 plus, you may choose new targets for that spell or ability. Then copy, you may choose new targets for the copy. This, I really like this one in this deck, because that means you have to roll a 5. It's pretty hard to whiff on, yeah. Mm -hmm. A 5 or greater on a d20 will get you a copy of their target and you change their target, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you, you've got a, what would that be, 16% chance, or you have a 20% chance to whiff. Yeah. Which, very good odds. Yeah, I know. I, I love I love the chaotic part of it. At worst, you're still, again, you're getting your, your uh, what is it, uh, deflecting SWAT effect. At worst, just not for free. Yeah. And at best, you're like double copying something. And as well, like I said, Traverse the Outlands was just reprinted, right? Yeah. If I can, if you try Traverse the Outlands and I Will's Reversal it, roll roll my five and I get a double Traverse the Outlands, oh man. 20 lands? Yeah, 20 lands into play for three mana. And like I said, you've got so much, uh, you have just so much uh, ability to ramp in this deck. You're going to have so many treasure mm -hmm. tokens, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, really like it. And then, yeah, it's it, the art like the instant section's pretty cheap. It's it's I really funny actually looking at it cost wise. It's fifty seven dollars for my whole instant section, and it's fifty of the dollars are in deflecting SWAT. And like mm -hmm. I, I when you were going through it, did you see did you hear like a bunch that you didn't like? No. Yeah, so taking deflecting SWAT out, you could possibly have a pretty, I think, solid instant section at seven dollars. Yeah, absolutely. Or eight dollars, yeah. It's like really not bad at all. Yeah, I really, like I said, I really like this deck. It's it's very cheap to play. Uh, it's very, very fun to pilot. Very, <laughs> very mm -hmm. good times. Um, we, we've got just a few creatures left to the end of it. And 
Oh man, I just I love everything about this deck. So our, our first creature on our list is gonna be Avatar of Slaughter. It's six double red, eight eight for an avatar. All creatures have double strike and attack each combat of Fable. Mm-hmm. 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 Pretty much nearly going to kill anyone with commander damage on ours alone. And yeah. we're going to make combat just a, a monster problem for every player at the table by giving everything double strike. Yeah. And it's way more likely that blocking and attacking creatures die. Also, it's a really, really cool flavor text. It's diplomacy has solved nothing. Only blood spill can end this now. Call forth the Warbringer by Bassandra ba- ah, Battle Seraph. Nice. Yeah. Avatar of Slaughter is going to be a real issue to hit the table in this and again generally speaking we are going to have the mana because so many things are going to have to attack mm. um next up we've got blood sworn steward two double red for a four four vampire knight with flying commander creatures you control get plus two plus two and have haste big big commander mm-hmm. yep uh we have capricopian it's x and a green for a zero zero goat hydra it enters with X11 counters on it. You can pay two mana, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Capricopian, then you can reselect which player it's attacking. Only the player Capricopian is attacking can activate this, and only during the declare attacker step. Hmm. It's very, very fun. And again, we've got, I, I feel like a broken record saying this, but we have so much treasure. So Capricopian can hit the deck as, as a 15-15, and people have to just fight over who it swings at. Yeah, it's going to end up being who has more mana that yeah. they can spend. It's really fun. I love Capricopian. Yeah. Um, next up, we've got Cemetery Gatekeeper, one in a red for two one vampire with first strike. When Cemetery Gatekeeper enters the battlefield, exile a card from a graveyard. Whenever a player plays a land or casts a spell, if it shares a card type with the exiled card, Cemetery Gatekeeper deals two damage to that player. Yeah, I really, really like this card. That would abs- that card absolutely hoses my Derevi deck. Yeah. yeah oh, because you have to constantly recast Derevi. Well, that and even without doing that. It's got 41 creatures in it. Oh, yeah. So if I just exile any creature every time you cast, you take that. Yeah. Cemetery mm-hmm. Gatekeeper is really, really fun. Um, I always liked the Zozu, the Punisher kind of effects where you mm-hmm. get drained for doing something. And being able to choose is really, really fun. Uh, there's a lot of decks that win by doing like an infinite mill thing with a brainstorm. So you just, if you hit an instant every time they cast it, they take two damage. Yeah. Yeah, Cemetery Gatekeeper really, really keeps players who need to go off in check, I think. Yeah, I would agree. And it's whenever a land enters. So if somebody gets this out on me, and I traverse the Outlands for 10, I'll lose 20 life. Yes. Yuck. Gross, right? Mm-mm. Uh, this, wouldn't be a, uh, this wouldn't be a Chaos deck without a Tali. Primal Storm, <laughs> we've got four double red. Legendary Creature Elder Dinosaur 6-6. Six, six. When a Tali Primal Storm attacks... Exile top card of each player's library, then you may cast any number of spells from among them without paying their mana cost. Awesome. It's, yeah. it's going to be really, really solid for us. We're going to hit our own stuff. We're going to chaotically take things from our opponents, which is very fun as well. Yeah. The storm rages and the earth breaks. I love it. I love this card so much. Yeah, this, yeah. It's a good card. Um, the next up, we've got Gorilla Shaman, single red for 1-1 one, one Ape Shaman. XX1, destroy target non-creature artifact with mana value X. Yeah. 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 With, with how... How many treasures we've got sitting there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to not be an issue to destroy something. True. Um, you could also make this the alternate commander of the deck. I don't think it would function as well, but it does ha- also have to choose a background, so you could switch it if you wanted. Uh, it's Karlak, Fury of Avernus. Four and a red. For a Tiefling Barbarian 5-4, whenever you attack, if it's the first combat phase of the turn, untap all attacking creatures. They gain first strike until the turn. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. Yeah, yeah. Gi- giving all your creatures first strike and a second combat is going to just really help out in this, especially because not much is going to be left by the time it gets to your turn in the terms of blockers. You're most of the time, if you can keep your commander alive, going to be able to freely swing at anyone. Yeah. Which is awesome. It's very fun. <laughs> um. Then we've got Kazul, Tyrant of the Cliffs, three double red for a legendary creature, Orc Warrior, or Ogre Warrior, 5-4. Whenever a creature an opponent controls attacks, if you are the defending player, create a 3-3 red Ogre creature token, unless that creature's controller pays three. Yeah, eventually everyone else is going to be dead and they have to swing into us, and this is a really good way to get ourselves some blockers. Speaking of a good way to get some blockers. Oh yeah, this, this card's awesome. I, I wish this could be, I've said awesome 500 times this episode, but... I really, really like the deck I put together, so 
forgive me. But yeah, I really love this card. It's uh, I've seen it just go off nonstop in Jetmere lately. But yeah, take it, please. Yeah, so this next one is uh, Krenko, 10 Street Kingpin, 2 in a red for a 1-2 legendary creature goblin. Uh, whenever Krenko, 10 Street Kingpin attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and then create a number of 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens equal to Krenko's power. I really, I really enjoy being able to freely swing Krenko and get those goblins out of return. Because mm-hmm. you've got three players, like I said, most are going to be tapped down and tapped out. So you'll, you'll be able to get your Krenko swing off. Oh, absolutely. I've put this in every deck that I can lately. I love this card. I'm in I every part of this card is my favorite part of this card. Marching yeah. Dodrome. Two mana, two two, construct. It's colorless. When it attacks, each player makes a treasure token. It it does everything I want. It gives me my group hug. It I'm gonna swing it at people. I love love marching duodrome. It it's just such a good card. Yeah, absolutely. There's almost no reason to not put it in decks if you wanna wanna have a little group hug element. Yeah, exactly. It's it's super yeah, super easy to convince people to take two damage so that everyone can get a treasure token. It makes the game go fast, helps players not stall out. It's a two mana thing. It helps you not stall out if for some reason you're stalled on land. I just I love everything about marching to a drum. Mm-hmm. Um this next one is another one that if you cut it would bring the value or the cost of the deck down quite a bit. This is Pathbreaker Ibex, uh four double green for a three three goat. Whenever Pathbreaker Ibex attacks, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until item turn where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Absolute game ender. Yep. Well, and as well with if you have your Cranko out for some reason, you can mm-hmm. you can get like eleven goblins on the first swing, twelve goblins on the first swing. Yeah. And then the next turn they are all huge. Yeah, Path Great. Pathbreaker Ibex really, really does put work in. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, just because, like, I didn't find the deck annoying enough, I like to put in Treasure Nabber. Uh, it's two and a red for a Goblin Rogue 3-2. Whenever an opponent taps an artifact for mana, you gain control of that artifact until the end of your next turn. This is just a really, really fun card for uh, being able to help ramp. You're kind of sharing the ramp. It'll kind of annoy people, but again, you're not stopping them from using it. You only get it till the end of your turn. Yeah, yes. exactly. So they'll get it back, but this will really accelerate you, especially if you've got, like, a pretty heavy early game play style uh, or play group, like lots of signets, signet, uh, like uh, the like the guild signets, the arcane signets, the talismans, any of those things. Just having access to them is really going to change the speed of your game up. Treasure Nabber is a very fun card to play with if you haven't used it before. Yeah, absolutely. I also, and I, I, I am in love with this flavor text too, it's the law of gives these back seasons respected by every noble pursuer of shiny things. <laughs> yeah, like yes. I said, it's it's a very very budget deck. Like your commanders, we've got two two things in the command zone at under five dollars. We've got fourteen yeah. enchantments at thirty dollars, and yeah, like the first one, the asceticism is twelve of it alone. Mm-hmm. My land section super basic because I wanted to fetch things with traverse the outlands at twenty six bucks. My sorcery yeah. is nineteen dollars. My instance again fifty dollars. If you were to cut deflecting swat, it's like eight dollars. Mm-hmm. And then the creatures are $41. Like you said, the Ibex, you could bring down half the price of the creature section alone. Like, like this is a really, really, you could probably throw a functional version of this deck together at around $100. Absolutely. You're going you're gonna to play a bunch of cards that your play group probably hasn't seen before. You're going to be able to do a lot of silly, fun things. You're going to life gain in green like it's nobody's business with things like that Predator's Rapport. Yeah, I just I, I just really liked playing this deck. I like Goat a lot as a mechanic. I like Chaos a lot, and I think there's just a ton of chaotic things in here. You could uh, you could make it more, but I, I don't think it overwhelms the table with annoying, but I think it's enough to like frustrate your playgroup a little bit, like just in a good way. Yeah. Yeah, like if if you played against this, would you would you have an issue with it? No, I don't think so. I think it's as chaotic as it is, I think it's very fair. Yeah. Um there's no real degeneracy in it i think there are definitely ways you could make it that but i appreciate that you didn't yeah i was, tr- I was trying to have fun with it right and a lot of mm-hmm. what uh a lot of the things that are gonna suck for players suck for every player not just for me right like possibility yeah. storm sucks for everyone not just not just for the other players pyrohemia it's gonna blow my creatures off the board too if i'm board wiping with it right jinx chokers mm-hmm. coming back at me pretty much every time it's going to unless someone else is mad at someone else like there's 
a lot of it is chaotic elements of us like changing the targets or making it so you can't target but yeah a lot of the things that we're doing are hitting us like we're we're not safe from this cemetery gatekeeper yeah exactly even even the shander's ignition it will kill all our creatures mm-hmm. we we have nothing in the deck that can survive a shander's ignition uh raised by giants bailoff yeah yeah i like i said i I've got a few games in with this one. I, I truly believe it like lives up to its deck name that I gave it of Bailoff Gigantic Entertainment. I think it's really, really fun. It's great to get a quick game in of Magic because it, it, it group slug things kinda kinda tend to drag everyone's life total down pretty quickly, right? Like that descent into yeah. Avernus, if it gets out, everyone's getting just treasure tokens, two treasure tokens, then four treasure tokens. They're losing two life, four life, six life, eight life. Like they're losing they're losing a lot. They're getting a lot. Everything's going quick. I, I just like decks like this personally, right? Obviously, I built the deck, so that's probably not a great metric of if you like it. But again, like I've been trying to build um, not not specifically budget things, but uh, I, I've been trying to build things that are fun for every playgroup, right? And every playgroup that I have with at least still kind of has a place for a deck like this. And they also not going to be out of reach if somebody likes this and wants to play it right like not everything has to be crazy overpriced i yeah. i think i think it's a great time to be getting into commander right now absolutely yeah like it, there's just so much uh the the Baldur's gate set specifically is just a great spot for self-expression and there's mm-hmm. just so many places that you can take these decks these commanders into like interesting things uh it's made it really really budget friendly like again this deck doesn't really need to We've got so much, they've shoved treasure tokens into everything, right? Like every, everyone and their first cousin makes treasure tokens right now in, in Magic. So yeah. we, we don't really need an extensive land base because we're in two colors. How hard is it in green to hit two colors? It's not. Not at all. Yeah, right? Like there's just, there's just a lot. And I just, I really enjoy uh, uh, like a, a really reasonable early game could be turn one soul ring marching duodrome, turn two mm-hmm. descent into Avernus. Yeah. So then, like, on my third turn, everyone's going to have three treasure tokens by me and taken two damage. So if everyone's on curve, everyone's at six mana turn three from my, like, silly deck. Like, I just, I don't know. I just have a lot of fun playing it. I got lots of thoughts on this one, and they've all been positive so far for me. Yeah, it's a very fun deck. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, yeah. like I said, we'll we'll get some, some of these games streamed at some point when I have time to edit videos. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I just, I had a ton of fun building this from the moment I saw this one. I was just like, all right, this has to be with Raised by Giants. Raised by Giants is so good. Mm-hmm. I've made oh, yeah, I've made a bunch of Raised by Giants deck. They're, they're all a blast. <laughs> Giant Wilson is really fun. Wilson Raised by Giants. Yeah. Oh, I still got to do, I still got to do some of the Wilson ones. We'll, we'll do Wilson. I'm, I think you also were saying like, I, I'll wrap it up here in a second, but I think you were also saying that you just also really like these, uh, these Baldur's Gate commanders. Yeah, yeah, I really, I'm really enjoying them. Uh, I think the background mechanic is very fun and unique, but still kind of feels familiar to like the partner or the partner with or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I really like it. Well, and they've got such interesting ways of expressing, like like the mm-hmm. opalescence one that you did last weekend, right? I think that that's like super yeah. super fun. I think that yeah. that just makes like a really that's an interesting deck. Yeah. Yeah, like you're not going to see many things like that. And this is just Goad and Chaos together. It's really, really fun. Like Kama was a blast, but Kama's controlled. I choose what I goad. I enchant those things. This is just like Chaos across the board for everything, and everything has to attack. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I just, I have a great time. If you if you have like Chaos cards that you enjoy in decks, let me know. Like let me know what I'm missing and what I should be running that's fun to to make the game a little more interesting to people. And yeah, thank you guys so much for getting to the end of our episode. Um, if you like our content, you can find it over at into the 99.com. We've got some new articles up. Some uh, new deck primers have been going up for the writing and they just are awesome, really fun ways to play some interesting commanders. Uh, we will be doing stream games. I know I say it all the time, but I promise we'll get there. Uh, thank you so much yeah. again to, like I said earlier, everyone who's rated, liked, and commented. Uh, it, it's a lot. Reach out to us on Instagram or on Discord. We, we love to hear from people about what they're building, how they're building it. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. Yeah.